Hi there, boys and girls. My name is Ken, and I'm here to welcome you to Casey's Train. We're going to start the process of setting up uh, signal lights on our layout. And I have found looking at uh, instructions and help files and uh, YouTube videos, it's uh, not all that straightforward a process. So I thought I would do what I could to simplify things for fellow railroaders. And uh, the first step in this little video is to take a look at an example file that JMRI has provided for us and just look at the various features and parts to the uh, setup, the uh, layout diagram, and uh, help familiarize you <coughs> with uh, what's all involved in uh, setting up signals. You have downloaded JMR, JMRI and it has put these two icons on your screen. <clears throat> so we will double click on this one. First of all, I go into Edit and into Preferences. And because I am using Digitrax system, make sure that that's what that says there. There's just a whole bunch of systems there, but I am working with Digitrax. And then System Connection, <coughs> we're working with the simulator at this point. When I do this with my layout, I will be connecting uh, my computer and the pro JMR, JMRI program to my uh, Digitrack system through uh, a USB, something called local, net, local Buffer, which I bought many years ago. I think nowadays you use this or this, PR2 or PR3, but for now we use the simulator. <coughs> and it allows us to do everything that we will do on uh, on the real thing without having any negative consequences. JMRI puts its files into two locations on your computer. The operating system goes into a folder called JMRI in your program file folder on your main drive. And its data <coughs> files, including your layouts, are in a folder called Users. The one that uh, we're looking for, the uh, layout file that we're looking for, <coughs> JMRI on their help file on their internet website, tells us that it is in the uh, Operations folder. So to find that, this, this defaults when you open it up to my JMRI Railroad. So we want to get out of that and we go up. There's the user folder. <coughs> we go up and that will take us to our operating system, C drive. You can see the user folder here and we want to go to program files. and to JMRI, double click, to the XML folder, and then to the layout folder, double clicking. This is the one we want, SEHC signal example. So we open that. So there is the little demonstration example layout 
with uh, signals. What do we have here? <coughs> A bunch of pretty red dots. But essentially what they have done is they have made a track layout in an oval. And they have put on a siding. And they have put two turnouts. LT1 and LT2. <coughs> So at this point, what we will do, this uh, question mark says uh, the program doesn't know which direction the turnout has been thrown. Is it thrown to the siding or is it closed to the main line? So we'll click on that once. And there it shows that it's uh, along the main line. And this one will do the same. If you click it again, it'll go into the siding. We don't want the siding right now. So back to the main line. <coughs> These things with the little crosses under them are the signal lights. And this one on the right side is for a train going to the left. And this one on the bottom is for a train going to the right. These gaps here in the line can indicate changes in blocks, block boundaries. So this block goes from here around and then down to here. And to find out what they call that block, we go to this, which is a sensor. And that's block four. We'll find this is five or three, two, one, and uh, five, six, seven, and eight. What they've done here is they've put uh, signal lights at the junctions of the blocks, which is the way it works in real life. Typically on a model railroad layout, we don't do that <coughs> because our blocks usually are not long enough to need that. But let's take a look at what we have here anyway and just to figure out and find out and discover how this signaling system actually works. The red on these sensors indicates occupancy. So if we had a train in each of these blocks, as is indicated by these red dots, then nobody could go anywhere, <coughs> and all the signal lights are red. So let's empty all the blocks. Well, now we see that a train anywhere on this main track could be going clockwise or counterclockwise and everything is free and open and the green says have at it full speed ahead and all that. Let's put a train in this block block four <coughs> let's occupy this block so now two lights change. What the lights tell us is that if this train is going either clockwise or counterclockwise, it's free to do so because the blocks on either side of it are empty and it is free to just carry on. This one turned from green to red to tell a train that might be in this block and heading this way that it cannot go past this junction because there's a train in this block. One train per block. <coughs> okay, let's take this thing and go counterclockwise. It's green, green, green. And if we put it here, and it moves from there to here, 
it, it's the same situation. Now let's move it down here and uh, put a train back here so it's one two blocks behind this one going in the same direction. When it comes to this block boundary this yellow light says the next signal you will see will be red so slow down. It's a warning that the red light will be at this block boundary and of course if that train moves to this block then it will have to stop here until this one moves out of the way and if it continues on up here then we, we get that same uh, yellow watch it the next block boundary light will be red slow down and get to this block boundary and the train would have to stop <coughs> Now when we come to the turnouts, it's, it's about the same th situation. Well, let's, let's go on the siding. So we click once and uh, the turnout turns. So we have a train here <coughs> and all is well. Let's move him from there to here to here to here. Now he's going to go on the siding. Now this says that he can't go on to this siding because it's occupied. That's unoccupied. <coughs> okay, now this train is free to travel on the siding and then back onto the main line. And if there is a train ahead of it <coughs> coming out of uh, the siding, then again we have our yellow and red light situation. This train will go up here and it will cross into this block and that's as far as it can go. It has to stop at that boundary because this train is right in front of it and if it moves along then again it's green into this block, uh, yellow into this block and then it has to stop because of this red light here. Now that's basically it the way JMRI has set up these signal lights with these block boundaries.